so my family will find this fun that I'm giving financial advice more of it today but I'm gonna dive in a bit further on the money side since I'm not the financially focused wizard that others are I'm in the perfect position to show some simple math and illustrate how you can commit a little each day or each week to helping you reimagine the word savings and become a little bit more financially secure and stable so join me today as I continue talking about my iteration of the FIRE movement and how to reimagine savings, even if you have a little or none. Welcome to Life Reimagined with Wendy. I believe we were fortunate to grow up in a unique time in our culture that is helping shape our lives over the age of 45. We are redefining what our lives are like today and pushing the boundaries of what a 45 year old, a 50 year old, a 65 year old, or years young and true adventurer really looks like. Many of us are newly blazing trails and carving out our own purpose driven path forward. Yep, there have been many unexpected road twists that helped you get here today, but many times these turn out to be blessings. They help you more clearly define what you want. So join me for insights and interviews that show you can face these unexpected challenges and you can come out on the other side stronger and happier. You can make your best days ahead and you can reimagine your next. So today I'm continuing with more recommendations on what I call the new FIRE movement, which is my version of financially independent and reimagining everything, with a focus on what to do if you don't have enough saved right now or if you simply have identified you want to save more. First, we'll cover a bit more about why this is important and then give an example on how you can reduce your debt, how you can reimagine rewarding yourself by increasing your savings fairly easily and the impact you still can have if you do something for you and your financial future now. Okay, so I am the least financially savvy person in my family, at least, but for that reason alone, I think I'm a very credible source. Uh, several years, or several times each year when I was in college, my father had to drive me down to the Third National Bank in Nashville and plead my poor college daughter case to remove some of the overdraft fees I kept incurring. I honestly found it way too easy to spend my parents' money, you know, spending others' money pretty easy but once I started actually making my own money I was a bit better I was saving you know and thankfully at an early age but it's still never enough and looking back if I had been more prudent when I was younger I'd have more savings today and more money working for me as I got a bit older I was at least getting better at saving and even now although I haven't mastered the art of all of it yet I am paying much more attention to saving more and spending less and trying to make my money work for me. I am concerned though, as I know there are many at or near my age that don't have enough retirement savings and some not enough and some even none at all. And a recent study from the Employee Benefit Research Institute found that 78% of respondents think they don't have enough for their retirement or they're all, they all outlive it, which is yikes, yikes. So I know life brings unexpected curveballs that happen. And maybe you've had or experienced a financial hardship that really hit your income hard or limited your ability to save. If so, I hope you'll hang with me just a little bit longer because I believe that pausing and actually doing something about it now can still really help. You come across folks on television or internet who talk about how to best invest your money and maybe you've been blowing them off because you don't feel like you even have saved enough to, to deal with the investment side of things. So is it better to keep avoiding? Yeah, uh, it can be painful to look in the mirror and realize we didn't do something or we haven't planned for X as well as we should or haven't saved enough. But even if you feel this way by this point, it's never too late. My philosophy is that you have to face it, even the tough issues you know are there. Because what if you don't face it right now? Well, 
you have at least a few options. First, the lottery. You know, the odds of winning the lottery, first of all, that's even if you play, as my lottery chances of winning are about 99.999% sure I won't retire from the lottery since I play about a dollar or two a year. So if, you, if you're investing in the lottery, that's math and, uh, and odds, I totally understand. But the odds of winning are significantly less than you getting run over by a herd of wild buffalo under a full moon while eating chocolate chip ice cream. second option is to set up your focus and intention and do something about saving a bit more. Save more a bit here and there. And the final option is to just hope you have a very patient and dear friend or close family member who will take you in and house and feed you when you can't work any longer. Otherwise you may have to go on Medicaid or be placed in a home that's really not exactly what you want your final days and years to look like. So believe me, while I don't love talking about money, I think it's a critical piece of creating the life you want and having options. So you have to make this a priority and you have to commit to it. Now that you're with me and you're ready to do something, we have to tackle first any debt and reimagine savings because other than mortgage for a home or student loans, and there may be other acceptable debt that other financial experts can comment on, comment on, so like maybe even possibly a car loan if you need to get to a job, but you can remove the other type of debt because every dollar you spend today with credit and every dollar you have in debt costs you more tomorrow. So the mere act of not putting another purchase on credit is already saving you right now and in the future. So let's reimagine the word savings. Instead of thinking it about it in terms of depriving yourself of something right now, what if you instead define it as you taking charge and actually rewarding or caring for yourself? You may not label yourself as a good saver today, but that can change in an instant. As I want you to think of it as you taking charge of you becoming your own chief financial officer, something I allude to more in my book, Destination Unknown. By doing so, you are giving yourself more choices and much better options for tomorrow, long and the short-term future. Saving means understanding, preserving opportunity and future options for you. It also means avoiding purchases big and small. You know, I used to pat myself on the back as I really didn't think, I didn't make big purchases. So I really thought, you know, I was being financially prudent. But where I went wrong and should have been better and more prudent and saved more before now is in all the little purchases. So I'm gonna come back to this in a moment. Because another definition of saving is putting money aside. Savings means not purchasing on credit today for the thing that was on sale. So let's say you buy the thing that was such a great deal for $120, but you put it on a credit card. And oops, you didn't pay it off the first month. And oops, it didn't pay it off the next month. And it kept adding up. Now it costs you $200. So it wasn't really that great of a bargain. So savings means putting you first. You have to take care of you and your family. I'm not gonna tell you otherwise, but don't take care of others at the expense of you. Don't give to your adult kids more than what is needed until you save for your financial security first. So let's get into it with some, some fun math. If you're a visual person, or once we get into this, have trouble understanding the math without seeing the numbers, you may wanna get a pen and paper and write this down as I share. Otherwise, you can check out the video version of this podcast. It'll have a math visual on the screen or the transcription notes here below to help. So I'm going to quickly compare four scenarios. You spend, first one is you spend $300 on something today and put it on a credit card with 18% interest. The second scenario, you spend $300 today in cash. Third scenario is you pass that up, don't spend any dollars today. And the fourth is that you finally, instead of buying something, you save the 
that $300 over the next 90 days and put it in an account that gains 4% interest. Now remember, this is a simple example exercise. And so it's not complex, but it's so you understand, hopefully rethink your next possible and non-essential purchase. So we're gonna look at the impact of these four different decisions at 24 months or two years and five years, just to show how stark the difference can be with one easy commitment by you to focus on saving that $100 a month. You spend $300 right now. You decide you've got to have that whatever it is and you pay for it on credit. Well, if you're paying only the minimum every month, it'll take you two years to actually pay that $300 off and you'll pay almost $60 additional in interest. At the end of five years, if you, you know, for some reason you didn't pay that off, that could be even worse. So the second scenario, you decide you still need that object and it's $300, but you pay cash for it. Well, not perfect, but at least you're not paying any interest on it, so you're out the $300. But at the end of two years and five years, that's still $300 less in your pocket to invest, and that's an opportunity cost. So the better scenario is you don't buy it at all. You spend $0 on it and you pay zero in interest. And the optimal scenario is, let's say you save and you're able to put $50 or $100 a month away and you gain 4% interest. Now, after two years, and even if you slide a little bit and don't do that every month, you're still gonna have a couple thousand dollars more in your pocket than you did before. And if you're very diligent, and let's say you do $100 a month at that 4% interest and you're able to do it for five years, that's over six grand in your pocket, which makes a huge difference. And when you compare that to the buying on credit card, right? Well, the buying on credit card puts you backwards, but you also miss the opportunity to put 6,000 in your pocket. So again, simple, simple explanation or simple example, but something I hope that sticks with you when you're considering a future purchase or something that might be non-essential. Like some of the examples I shared in last week's episode, you can eliminate coffee, the $4 coffees multiple times a week, or eating out for one to two or four people, one time at a nice restaurant, or even two to three times at fast food, because fast food is not that cheap anymore. Heck, even if you save $10 a week and put $40 a month into that formula, this will still help you move in the right direction. And if you look around, there are many people who are wealthy, and you don't have to really and it's not hard to spot if you take a closer look they are they can be really cheap and I mean this as a compliment they pack their own meals they drive non flashy used cars they don't have the latest and greatest shiniest and they're not the ones flaunting their wealth so even if you get started and then fail or backslide it's not the end of the world if you start out trying to save a hundred but only save 45 this month that's a big step forward or it could be that a big step forward for you wasn't adding to your debt, then you're already saving money. So again, pause and look at your actions right now. You can reduce your expenses. You don't need to buy that shiny new object that doesn't make you any happier. And you don't have to have the most beautiful car to get you around. You can buy great quality used items on Craigslist or Let It Go or other ways. And you can make more meals at home you can plan a bit better. Don't go out to lunch as often. You know, my mom, when we were growing up, we didn't have a ton of money and ground beef used to go a long way. When my mom would make spaghetti, that would feed the family of four for two to three nights with the pound and a half of beef that she bought instead of one night of hamburgers. So instead, you will prioritize you and take steps now to make it better for you today and tomorrow. Heck, it may even make you sleep better, knowing that you're tackling this head on and doing something about it. I hope this either helps enlighten or inspire you to make better choices for you today, and also hopefully possibly commit to reading one article each week from somebody who's more financially savvy on how to better have your money work for you. Committing to one article financially a week is an easy choice for me, and one I can stick to. It also helps when I see something new and shiny 
as it reminds me and keeps me grounded and realizing eh, that shiny new object is not worth me having to work an additional year or two or sacrificing a trip next year to a national park. I'm a huge advocate that getting out into that national park or just playing out in nature is inexpensive financially but deeply personally fulfilling. And I post videos and pictures from these type of trips on Instagram and my YouTube channels. So just search for Destination You Wendy and you'll find it. I hope you check it out and look for more recommendations on how to stay focused on you and how to set up your best next within our Destination You community. Check out my book, Destination Unknown. Tackle our free weekly personal challenges in our Facebook group receive inspiration to get out and play more and find yourself through nature and through adventure in my Instagram posts. Thanks again for listening and remember that it's never too late to invest in you. Keep focused on you and your priorities and what easy steps you can take today to make today and tomorrow your best next chapter.